Frank, uh, there are many fascinating things about you, but I think the thing that I find most fascinating far and away is the fact that you made a huge career change fairly recently. You're an award-winning astrophysicist, and now you're, now you're dealing with climate change. How, how did you make that jump? Well, it's been more gradual than it seems. Uh, I've always been concerned about climate change, even from 30 or more years ago. And, uh, but it's only recently, about five years ago, that I realized that the problem that I thought would long be solved, in fact, was not being solved. And that there were many, many conflicting ideas as to where the solution lay. So I wrote an article which assessed, as an astrophysicist, all the various forms of energy, including fossil fuels, alternative energies, etc., cetera, uh, and gave advice as to how I thought Taiwan in particular should proceed. But I've discovered in writing that article, I felt a sense of guilt that here was this very important problem, and it wasn't enough for me just to give advice. I thought that I actually had to try to contribute toward finding uh, rational, reasonable solutions. There are obviously a lot of problems in the world right now. You feel like this is the most important, the most urgent thing to deal with? I think uh, short term, maybe not, okay? Middle term, long term, yes. I think what many people feel that climate change, if it progresses to the worst that uh, people have projected, uh, can become civilization disrupting would become so disruptive of all our social traditions and national interests that civilization could really dissolve into chaos. It seems like a pretty big jump to go from astrophysics to climate change. Were, were you able to bring kind of a, a unique outsider perspective to what's wrong with the Earth, how we're, how we're messing things up? Well, I think an astrophysicist, you know, views the Earth as one of many systems in the universe. So we look at the Earth as a whole, and we're able to assess the various contributions to energy potential from uh, fossil fuels, from nuclear energy, from sunlight, from wind, uh, etc., in a unified way. And that's what my article is about, to assess the potential. And uh, once you put it in the astronomical perspective, you realize all these energy sources come from <laughs> astronomy. Yeah. Okay? And so we're able to make that assessment in a, in I hope, an impartial way. People gen generally have t tend to think of, uh, of solar and wind as being positive things. Um, why, why weren't those the things that you jumped to? I think they are positive things, okay? But they fall in the category of what uh, experts call non-dispatchable energy. And that's just a jargon for uh, things that you can't use when you want. You can only use it when nature gives it to you. And uh, for example, we're used to turning on a switch and getting electricity right away, right? Well, what happens if you go to a system where the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing and you turn on that switch and nothing happens. That's what non-dispatchable means. Whereas fossil fuels or nuclear energy or uh, hydroelectricity are dispatchable because you can use it whenever you want. Yeah. What led you specifically to nuclear? Obviously this is a huge red flag for a lot of people, but this is something you've been really invested in. Yeah, well, so there's two kinds of nuclear energy and uh, one of them comes from fusion, which is how stars make uh, energy. So when you combine light elements to make heavier elements, you can extract energy. The other comes from fission, which is the way we use nuclear energy today, which you take from heavy elements and break them apart, and you can also release energy. Both those are astronomical. Fusion relies on events that took place in the Big Bang that made, for example, a heavy form of hydrogen, deuterium. And uh, fission relies on supernovae, which uh, is 
a process that makes neutron stars, mm -hmm. and therefore neutron stars, you have lots of neutrons, so it's very easy to make very neutron-rich heavy elements. And heavy astrophysicists know those are the two most powerful events in the universe, so it's hard to beat.